This is my SDR Play RSP1A. It's in a non-standard case, as these radios come, these SDRs come, they're in a plastic case. But I bought this aftermarket case, it wasn't particularly expensive. But it is metal, I thought maybe it will improve the screening of the receiver. And it offers it a bit more protection if you were to drop the thing. It's more likely to survive, it's in quite a robust little case. Nothing to look at the front, there's no LED indicators of any sort with the RSP1A. Um, and at the rear, we've got a single antenna port, a USB connection, and the case adds this extra little ground connection if it's needed. The receiver is also capable of um, putting 5 volts on the antenna socket here. So it's got the bias T facility to power an active antenna, for, for instance. And this receiver is rated between, uh, I think it's 1 kilohertz and 2 gigahertz. So it's got a very, very wide coverage. Obviously that's dependent on having a suitable antenna connected. Um, I've used mine mainly on HF. Well, I've done a little bit of VHF listening with it. And it works very well. And for some time I've run it uh, as a remote receiver using the Open Web RX software. But um, currently I'm using an RTL uh, dongle for that purpose. And uh, I'll explain why when we talk a little bit more about the SDR play. Radio comes with its own software, uh, which is called SDR Uno, which has um, got quite a steep learning curve, very uh, advanced piece of software actually, but takes a while to uh, get to grips with, and we'll look at that in a moment. Right, here's the uh, SDR Uno. It's the software that uh, is designed for use with the um, SDR Play devices. I've got my... Um, RSP1A plugged in here. So, um, to start SDR Uno, you press the play button on this panel here, and uh, you'll see that it bursts into life. Just turn the volume down there so that you can hear me. Um, similarly, with uh, a lot of the SDRs, you can alter the bandwidth. It's um, pretty easy to do it on uh, SDR Uno but with the RSP 1A at least you can go to a 10 megahertz bandwidth which is the widest of the uh, SDRs that I have so let's click on 10 megahertz again this machine's capable of running that but um, it's quite resource intensive I'll just take this panel out of the way you'll see now that um, this is what I don't like about this software You've got a series of uh, floating panels. Uh, on the top left, we've got this main one here, which is our uh, on-off button. We've got an RF gain control. We can switch the IF mode. We can switch in no notch filters. We can alter the bandwidth. Then we've got our tuning panel here. Um, we've got various uh, band switches. We can um, scroll up and down the frequency using the mouse if we wish here. We've got our mode buttons and our controls for the uh, the notch filters. Notch filters are very good in SDR Uno, by the way. Oh, we've got a familiar uh, waterfall and spectrum display here. And uh, again, um, you now we can we can zoom in and out on this and just bring the panel up a bit and you can see we've got zoom controls at the bottom we can zoom closer in right in on what we're looking at or we can zoom out we can of course click on the waterfall to help us tune a signal let me just fine tune it up there we zoom in again and we can see quite clearly where we're tuned got various bandwidths 8 kilohertz bandwidth 11 and similarly um, let's just see over here in this window we can open and narrow the bandwidth using the mouse but where I find this software a bit difficult is you've got these separate panels, they're all floating around. 
Um, we've got record facilities here in this little window. Uh, we close that for the time being. We've got various plugins and the um, the way their SDR Uno works is there are various um, sort of additional uh, programs you can run by way of plugins. Got an audio recorder. Uh, that's as distinct from the the other recorder I've just closed, which was the IQ recorder, which records a, um, a, a chunk of spectrum. You can replay the audio recorder. Will just record audio from um, whichever station you're tuned to. Got DAB facilities, uh, a DX cluster. Um, you can use the software as a scanner, and the scanner window is there. And there are various memory facilities with the uh, program as well, which are controlled by this panel. Um, an awful lot to go into. Um, if you really want to learn how to use this, it's going to take a while, but it is a powerful piece of software. There are aspects of it I really like. The notch filter, as I've already said, for example, is really, really good on it. Um, but I find it a little bit confusing with these windows and the plugins and so on. Um, but it does work well with the RSP1A, I have to say that. Um, would I use it as a matter of preference? No, I probably prefer SDR console. Um, but I know a lot of people really like this software. And since it's the um, there's sort of bespoke software for the SDR, play devices I thought I'd show you this um, you could spend hours looking at the uh, various facilities here but at least this gives you an example of what it looks like and the most basic of the controls again I can zoom right out here and we'll see the, um, the 10 megahertz bandwidth um, we've got 1.6 megs down here the bottom end and we've got uh, we're on about 11 11.5 11 at the top end we can click on anything in between okay so we can go to 9 the 9 megahertz band and we can tune in there we can go to into the uh, 41 meter band here and just tune there there's nothing there tune around and of course uh, if we increase the frequency up here we'll similarly extend the top end of uh, what we're looking at and uh, we're now looking down to what about nine and a half megs and up to um, 19 so look at that part of the spectrum we've got the 19 meter broadcast band the 20 meter band 25 meter broadcasts and so on and again we can just uh, zoom in we can have a look at 20 meters here switch to upper sideband zoom in see if we can find a signal there band's pretty quiet at the moment there's a few there So the basics of this are relatively easy to use. The, the tuning is, is pretty straightforward. The switching of modes and bandwidth is pretty straightforward. I think it's the add-ins and the um, the layout. I prefer personally everything in one, one window, one panel, but we've got these various panels. Um, I mean, this um, spectrum panel here, for example, we can, we can close that. Shiva will still work. Um, but I guess it's horses for courses. I don't know what you think of SDR, you know, but um, there it is. Let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you for watching.